I'm a registered dietitian. Uh, I've been working for about 25 years now, I'm really embarrassed to say that, uh, in dietetics. And my real passion is care for older adults, nutrition care for older adults. I've worked in acute settings. Um, I had a lovely job where I worked for the local authority as a dietitian uh, for nutrition for care of older adults. And I've worked as a consultant for Appetito and Milch Farm Foods on and off for about 20 years now. Uh, so I work just freelance as a consultant for, for them. It's one of my favourite companies to work for. So I was really pleased when they asked me to come along and, and deliver these sessions. So that's, about, that's a bit about me. Oh, the other thing is I work for the CQC as a specialist advisor on nutrition as well. So if anybody wants to have a chat about that in the, <laughs> in the break, because I'm sure all of you have interactions with CQC, don't you? Uh, so I go around to care homes and hospitals looking at nutrition care, helping the inspectors there with that. So that's me. And it's such an interesting mix. Actually, before we start, let's have a quick shout out of the professions in this room because I was really fascinated. Let's just shout out any professions that we've got in the room. OT, I'll start with. Hands up, OTs. Hey. Any other professions? Nurses? <laughs> Dietitians. Your nutrition. What's that? <laughs> it's not me, is it? <laughs> Mental health. Yay. What haven't I mentioned? A care, domiciliary care? Oh, wow, lots of people. Anything that I haven't mentioned? Physio? Speech and language? Oh, well done. Thank you. So we've got a really interesting mix, and I hope you'll get to um, you know, do some networking with other people as well in the, in the session. So we've, we've got lots of theory, but we've got lots of practical as well, so you won't be sitting there for two hours having to, having to listen to me. Don't worry, we've got lots of things to break it up with. I'm happy to take questions at any time. And am I in your line of view, or am I out there? Okay, that's fine. <coughs> so I need to move around a little bit though. So this is just to remind me to say that we've got tasting in the session today, and halfway through we'll stop and have a break for some, some food. And we've got lots of different types. We've got gluten-free meals, we've got high energy meals, uh, texture modified that you can try, lots of different things that Wiltshire Farm Foods make. But what we're really going to look at is how can we help older people in the community to receive good nutrition. So we're going to look at the transition from acute settings to community settings, but a lot of the information is applicable in acute, in, in acute settings as well. What do older adults eat and why? I'll have a look at that. What are the key factors impacting on their nutrition? A lot of focus on practical suggestions that you can put. And as I was going around, loads of people said to me, what we want from today is some practical ideas of how we can promote nutrition in our clients. So we will do that. Resources. I've got quite a big section on resources because I know that often when you go away, what you want is something that you can use with your clients <coughs> that's not expensive, that you know is um, uh, evidence-based, that's really good. And I've trawled through what, what the free resources that are out there that I know are really good. And questions at any time. But first, because I'm just so ingrained in teaching, I've got a quick quiz. So this is like a pub quiz without the beer. <laughs> so you've got water. <laughs> I was at a pub quiz last night, which made me think of that. You've got a red and green card on your table. If you can pick up your red and green cards. Lovely. Now, the... The green card means it's true, the red card means it's false, okay? So all at once, I'm gonna ask you to raise your, your card. I'm gonna put up some statements and I want you to say whether you think they're true or false, okay? And it's so interesting, the last two days we've, we've done, we've had a lot of these questions that have completely split the audience. So let's see what we get today. So, is it true or false? The quality of diet matters even more as we get older. Whoa, I, that's rather away from me. Can, I, can you turn yours around? That's it. <laughs> that's all right, yeah. <laughs> I should say, you've only got a colour on one side. <laughs> well, this is a, I can see already this is a good audience. It's going to be hard, hard to fall. And I'm going to give you all the answers as we go through the talk, okay? So we had mostly trues there. We had a few falses. Weight loss is an inevitable part of ageing. Well, that split the group. That's interesting. Okay. Costs to the NHS for malnutrition are greater than that for obesity. Could that be true? Or is it false? Well, that split the group as well. That's interesting. 
All right, we'll, have a, we'll do this quiz again at the end and we'll see if everybody agrees at the end. Malnutrition in the UK is mostly found in older adults in hospitals and care homes. So is it mostly found in hospitals and care homes or is it mostly found in the community? Again, that's split the group, okay? As I said, all the answers will be in here. Effects of malnutrition take several months to show. True, 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 false. We've mostly got true there. Okay, that's interesting. <coughs> Eating with other people increases food intake. Well, that's 100% true. <laughs> said that. And you'll see that at lunchtime, won't you, when you're eating? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly half of older adults cannot carry a shopping bag weighing five, weighing five kilos. True. Oh, I've got almost 100% true there. Five kilos is just under a stone. About half of people with swallowing difficulties are at risk of malnutrition. I've got lots of truths, I've got a few. Did you mean to put a full sign? No. <laughs> I was going to say, you're the only red card, I'm sure you've been. Yeah. Okay, who works with people with swallowing difficulties? Oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, well, we'll be focusing a bit on that as well. Brilliant, thank you for bearing with me. You can put your red and green cards down now. And as I say, we'll do that at the end again and see. So just to start with, I just thought we'd have a couple of slides about why are we looking at the ageing population. Well, no, that laser doesn't work. Um, this is the green is 2017, so this is where we are at the moment. There's 10 million over 65s, there's 3 million over 80s. That's huge, isn't it? But look at what's projected to happen by 2050. The, the population over 65s will go to 19 million, over 80s will go to 8 million. So it is a big, a big issue. Over 80s is the fastest growing demographic and that which requires most health and social care. So nutrition of older adults is going to be uh, an issue that isn't going to go away. And I don't, I think I'm preaching to the in this room because all of you, when I was going around and chatting to you, I'm sure all of you are aware of that. But have a look at this, there's more people over 65 than under 18. Life expectancy for women, 82.8 years. I'm sorry men, you aren't gonna last quite as long as us, 79. That's not bad, is it? So aging, people are aging. The problem is, is that that additional lifespan is not always spent in good health. The gap between life expectancy and healthy life expectancy is increasing. And people are spending those extra years not necessarily in good health. And I'm sure to all of us, that's, that's a key issue. And nutrition is one of those things that can make a difference to that healthy life expectancy. And we'll have a look at what the evidence is around that. So <coughs> it was true that um, the quality of the diet matters even more as we get older. Nutritional requirements say the same. Just because you're getting older doesn't mean your nutritional requirements have gone down. But the problem is that our food intake falls between the ages of 40 and 80 by about 25%. Does anybody eat less than they did 10 years ago now? Or is it just me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's a big drop. So that means that what's left, the fact that you're eating less food, uh, that has to be better quality if you're going to get the nutrients you need. So when you're 20, living on tea, biscuits, crisps and having the odd meal is probably not going to be a disaster. You're probably going to get all your nutrients. But if you're eating much less, that food that you have has to be good quality. So just surviving on tea and biscuits, you're going to get, be at risk of malnutrition much quicker. The other thing is that digestion and absorption decrease as we get older as well. So uh, the, the, the nutrition we get out of our food is a bit less. That means that the quality has to be better. So quality, balance and variety become even more important. And often when I'm working with older adults, I say, well, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm 70 now, I'm 75 now, does it really matter what I eat? Well, yeah, you know, the quality of your diet in terms of that healthy life expectancy makes a big difference. So what are older people eating? Well, there's a really interesting study called the National Diet and Nutrition Survey. And what they do is they look at four day snapshot of older people and they see, they measure from food diaries. Generally speaking, the diet in older adults in the UK isn't great. Low in fibre, low in fish, low in fruit and vegetables, all the things we know are good. High in salt, uh, saturated fat and sugar. 
So the quality of the diet in older people isn't great. And that's one of the factors that's contributing to that uh, gap between life expectancy and healthy life expectancy. The other thing that they've come up with, well, they've found this, is that there's a subgroup of older adults who have very low intakes of food energy or calories, low intakes of protein, low intakes of vitamins and minerals. And I'm sure all of you in this room that are working with older adults will have seen that, that those groups where there's just a very, very low quality of, of nutrients. So anything that we can do to improve that is going to be a bonus. So what I'm going to do is just have a think before we move on to what we can do practically is what might be the factors that make that diet maybe not so great in older adults. And I've divided it into physical, psychological and social, but the categories don't matter. I'm giving you a case study and on your table I want you just to come up with, if you can, a couple of things in each of those categories that might impact, and we've got a case here, Mr S, he's a, a made up example of somebody that, that any of us might work with. So he's an 80 year old widower, he's lived alone since his wife died, he hasn't got a car and if he wants to go food shopping he has to get on the bus, he's got no teeth. Uh, he's poor eyesight and he's got arthritis. I'm mean, aren't I? I've given him everything. <laughs> Sometimes he's confused whether he's eaten and he tends to think, why bother at my age? Have you got people that you work with who say that to you? Yeah. And he says he's not enjoying his meals. So if you can just write down as a table, and we'll go round until we've used that all of them, anything social, psychological or physical that you think is affecting Mr S's food intake. And I'll come round to it's not unrealistic though, is it? 